10 feet wide on the left side and 10 feet wide on the right side. My shoulder width, I'm going to make that an extra 3 feet on the left side and the right side. There's three layers. There's an asphalt layer, a crush layer, and a base layer. I'm going to make my crush layer a uh, 0.25 or 0.33. of a foot thick. My crush slope, which is this slope going down from the second layer to the uh, third layer, I'm going to make that 2 to 1. My base thickness, I'm going to make that about half a foot. Base slope, I'm going to also make that 2 to 1. And that's it for the roadway component. You can see what our roadway component looks like just by looking in this window right here. Move it up and down above and below the ground if you want to. Now we can manipulate our ditch component. I'm going to make our ditch component go down to a point. So I'm going to make it zero width on the left and the right side. Make it about four feet deep and separate down. and make the enslope around 2 to 1 on both sides, left and right side. So that's the enslope right there. That purple area right there is the enslope. Now let's do our slope component. I'm going to actually uh, get a different slope component. I'm going to use a newer one. Go into my slope components folder. Copy and paste this one. and use it up in my rural paved template. As new. And then I'm going to delete this one. Go and change my uh, final cut slope and final fill slope to 2 to 1. Notice that this component only uh, deals with the left side. Let's copy and paste it again and put it on the uh, right side. There we go. That's what our new solo. That's what our new slope components look like. Now I have to assign that template, and then we can start with our alignment, horizontal alignment. Assign parameters by range. Instead of the default template, I'm going to use the rural paved template that I just created. From dot dot to dot to dot dot means from beginning to the end of the road. And now we're going to recalculate our road alignment. Although we haven't do, done any alignment yet, now let's start with some doing, doing some road alignment. Start with our first alignment point right there, and then uh, move over here and add an alignment point with the mouse. You don't have to add any uh, of your IPs with the mouse if you don't want to. You can actually type them in with actual XY coordinates if you want to. Move that IP a little bit up and put one more IP over here. And now let's add in our horizontal curves in our horizontal curve panel. Jump to the previous IP. I'm going to do, I'm going to set it up as a circular curve, type in a design speed, 40 miles per hour seems like a good design speed. You can see that we have a super elevation of 6 here, that is directly retrieved from Ashto tables. We also have a side friction that has been retrieved from uh, those same ASHTO tables. And our transition is, was coming from an ASHTO table. I'm going to turn that off. And I'm going to just type in my own transition of 50 feet. So what this means is transition takes about 50 feet from beginning and from the end of the curve to transition from 
six, from 0% super elevation to full 6% super elevation. And two thirds of that transition, 0.667 of that transition occurs outside of our curve, and one third occurs inside of our curve. That's what this number means, transition fraction. You could also use tables to uh, put in a widening if you want to. Or you could type in your own widening. In this case, I'm not going to put any kind of widening in. Let's apply this. Notice that I have only one curve. I'm going to increase my uh, design speed actually and make it a larger radius curve. You can move your alignment around. And notice how the, uh, the section window and everything redraws real time as you move around. Increase the design speed a little bit more. I have a 130 foot radius curve in here. I'm going to auto generate some extra cross sections so my curve is drawn a little bit better than it is right now. I'm going to auto generate cross sections every uh, five feet along this alignment. You can see how the uh, it redraws a lot better when you got a lot more cross sections. And again, watch how my slope stakes redraw as I move this alignment around horizontally. There's the new slope stakes redrawn in the plan window. And here's my new cross section. The current cross section is the one that you see here with the crosshairs. If you want to take a look at more cross sections, you can easily go through by pressing these buttons right here. And the software will jump from one cross section to the other.